If you do IT as a subject, you will know that at the end of the year, you have to do a practical assessment task or hand one in that shows off all the skills that you've learned. And so this video is just going to give you some tips and ideas on ways you can improve your PAT. And we're going to be looking at project notes in this video. Now, what are project notes? Now, if you've gone through the documentation, you'll notice that there's two main aspects about um, the project notes. And this is right at the end of the document. So a lot of people actually forget about this part and then they lose marks in their patch because they don't have project notes. So first of all, when it comes to the project notes for developers, that second part, it says they include um, limitations, ensure that the program is installed, how, all those details about how the program works. Um, a lot of that is the embedded comments. So you put slash slash and then you can write all your comments about your functions and your procedures and all the different sections of code and what they are doing. That's very good to have comments in your code so that people can look at your code and see exactly what's happened. It's also good to have a little document maybe that says for developers, this is what's not working. This is what is working. Any like things like that that needs to be done. Now for the user, that's a little bit more tricky. So the user, you must assume will never see the, the, the code. So therefore they can't see the comments in the code. So we want to create some sort of help file. Maybe they need to know what the passwords are or how to install it, or maybe some bugs or problems that you want to highlight or how to use the program mainly. That's the, those are the project notes that you want to give to the user. Now you can create a document that just has all those details in with screenshots. That's great. Um, he has a little fancy way that you can use project notes in the program for your um, user. And there are three ways that I would consider doing it. The one way is to get data from a text file. So you might have a text file which has all the project notes in it about how the program works. And then we just load the text file data in the actual program. Another way is to create a web page and load the web page in the program. Another one is to create an instructional video. So let's have a look at what options are available to us when we do this in Delphi. So let's start with the data from a text file. So yeah, we've got a program. Okay, it's got nothing in the program, but I just want to show you what I've got. I've got a little question mark over here, a little label, and I'm going to use that as my help option. So when you click on that, then the help option must appear. You can make it appear as a new form. It's up to you. I've made it as a panel. So I've got this little panel that's hidden over here. And when it pops up like that, so therefore it'll come to over here. When you click on the question mark, the panel will come into this part of the screen and then it will be made visible because I made it invisible. And then all the details will be put on this panel. So I've got a little close button and all that close button does is hide this panel so that it disappears. Um, and then over here, we're going to have our memo. We've got a little T memo. And I just want to take whatever's in the text file and display it in here. So yeah, we've got a text file that's got all my help issue, issues. So there we are questions on how to do certain things. Obviously, I haven't done it properly. I've just, just did a little example over here. So I want to load the stuff that's from there into this memo. So that's a good idea of a way that you could use your help. So I'm just going to come over here to the code for the help option. So what happens is we're going to make the help panel true. We're going to sit place it so that it's nice at the front and then we're going to clear the memo and you could use the load from file and just load whatever's in the text file straight into the memo that would work as well but if you want to use your uh, text file algorithm to get some good marks there there's a good way to use your text file algorithm also if you only want to load certain parts of the text file maybe you've got a text file that's got all the help options and when they click on different question marks it'll bring up different parts of the text file so then you'll have to do some sort of searching for that content in the text file. So you could use the code there, which is quite fancy code that you could use that will get you some good marks if you use that. So this loads whatever's in the text file, in this text file, it loads all of it into the memo. Now when I run it, you'll see what it does. It's going to obviously make that panel visible and put it nice in the center of the screen. So when I click on it, okay, obviously I haven't hidden that panel, but I would make it invisible. When you click on it, there's the panel and it loads everything that's in the screen. Now, the only problem you'll notice is that because it loads everything, it goes to the end of the screen. That's where it stops. You would ideally want it to look like this when it loads. So it loads everything and then goes back to the top. So what you can do, I found some nice little code that you can use. I've found, I've just commented it out. So you can copy this code and this code will help you get it back to the top. So the memo dot cell start is set to zero and then you perform this particular code. Just copy that code. EM underscore scroll curve it or sorry, whatever slash zero slash zero. Okay. Well, not slash, but comma. Okay. So what that does is this little piece of code here will just take you to the top of the memo control. So if we run it now, boom, you'll see we at the top and it's already loaded everything.
So that's one way that you could put in your project notes, a very easy way, a little text file and do some text file handling. That way you get some marks for your code as well for, with handling text files. Okay, so that's one way. Another way is to use a web page. Now there's preparation involved for that. You would have to create a web page first. So let's have a look at that first. Now creating a web page, you can either create it using a web page editor tool. Maybe you can um, use it using Notepad. If you know how to use HTML code, you can create a really fancy web page that would be quite nice to display. Um, if you really don't know anything about HTML and stuff like that, you want to keep it as simple as possible. The other option is to create a Word document. Um, where you have all your details in your Word document and then you would save it. Okay, the options that you can save it as, if I click on file, save as, um, it'll bring up different options and the options that are available to you, instead of saving as a Word document, you can save it as a web page or you can save it as a single, I think there's a single option single file web page which is a mhtml file now i've done both of them just so you can see what it looks like so i've taken this file it'll convert it'll, it'll convert some stuff will not be able to transcend like um those double lines aren't available in the html code when it converts it so it'll just make it a single line but whatever it can take across it'll take across so i've taken this word document and saved it as an html file so let's go have a look at what that looks like so i have three potential web pages yeah so i'm just going to show you what they are there's this file over here is a single HTML file. If I save that web page, that Word document, there's the Word document. If I just save it as a single HTML file, it'll look something like that. So it's a web page example, eight or M A H T. Okay, so that's the file for the single web page. The reason why it says single web page is because when you make a web page, it normally has associated files with it. Um, so when you save it as just a web uh, HTML file, one or not a single file, but as an HTML file, what it does is it actually creates a page with a folder and all the extra, extra details about that page and the formatting is in a separate folder with other files there. I've saved that in this web page folder. Yeah, yeah, you can see there's the web page, it's an HTML file, and there's a whole bunch of files that are associated with that file, and that's. Those two were the ones that I did when I saved it from a Word document. First place would actually be if you know HTML code or you've got an HTML editor and you can actually create a web page, which I created a, a manual one there, which is just the HTML file. No special things. It's just using HTML code that I use there. So I've got three options. I've got the single one that I got from Word. I've got the, the one with all the extra files, which I also got from Word. And then I've got the one that I made myself using HTML code. So how do we display this in Delphi? Okay, well, so let's go to Delphi. And we're going to use the same idea where something pops up. Instead of using a memo control, I'm going to use a web browser component. So there's the web browser, a T web browser. I'm going to place it on the form. Boom, boom, boom. So that's my T web browser component. And there are options for that to go to. You can actually, go, if you've got internet access, you can go to a particular page if you want to, if you want to load them from the internet. But if you want to load a static file that's saved locally in the project file, what we're we going to do. So I've got this web browser component. I'm going to drag this down here. And then when I click on the code over here, I'm going to say web browser one, whatever it's called, whatever your web browser component is, dot navigate. Now, we're going to say file colon slash slash, which means we're getting it from the local file. Then we're going to get the current directory where the project files are. And then we're going to be able to put slash and the name of the web page. Now, if we look at my options here, let's load this one, the H, the MHT. So we can load the MHT file first, MHT, make sure it's spelled exactly the way it is there. So there's the MHT file. So let's load it and see what it does. So when we click on the file, it'll make the panel visible and then it'll automatically load from the um, web browser component, the local file, boom. So it's busy loading. You can see it's running, boom, boom, boom. And there we go. There's my web page. It's in the web browser component. Now that's the one file that we loaded. Okay, the other potential file is the web page that I created myself, which is just an HTML file with the same name. So with that one, I think it's blue. I made it blue and white. So HTML. So that's just my my HTML file that I used to create an HTML code. I made it a blue background with white text, if I remember correctly. So I load that. 
So there you can see it. So that's the different web page that is being loaded. Boom, boom, boom. Exactly the same content. And then the last one, what happens if I want to get that file that's in a separate folder? That's it's also called an HTM file. So it's also called web page HTM. But it's not in the current directory. It's in a web page folder, then the current directory. So then I'm just going to come here and say web page slash the web page example file. So it goes to the current directory, then go into that folder, then get that file. So that will load that particular web page. So let's click there. And there it loads the other file that I saved from Word. And that's loading the one in the web page folder with all the extra files. Okay, so that's that one. So that's how you can load a web or for example a web page. So create a nice HTML file and then you can just load that there. You can also navigate to a particular web page. So you can say web browser web browser one dot you can go home or go back or go search to the default search option or you can say navigate and then you can actually type in the URL of the web page that you want to go to if you know that the web page is actually uh, on the internet. So that's another nice little feature that you can use. Okay, so that's how you use a web app or an HTML file for your help documentation. Now let's look at a video option. So for the third option, we want to create a video. Now, if you don't have software to create a video and you don't, or don't know how to, I'm going to show you just quickly how you can make an educational or instructional video of your program of how it works. Um, all you need is PowerPoint. So the little tip here, we're going to first run our program. So obviously your program should be working properly. So we're going to run our program. So we can make a video of it actually doing it in, in real time. So I'm going to hide it. So I'm going to show how this pad thing works or the, the help function works. Now I'm going to go to PowerPoint. I'm going to create a blank PowerPoint uh, slide, just a blank one slide. I'm going to just leave that. The, no, just the program is still running in the background. That's fine. And then I'm going to say insert and then screen recording. So when I click on screen recording, it'll go to my screen and you can select an area of your screen that you want to record. So I want to select just that part. Maybe you want a certain part of your screen or you want the whole screen. It's up to you. You can do that. You can record that part of the screen. Oh, let's do it a little bit better there. So let me get the whole bit in. There we go. So there I'm going to record that screen. And when we click on record, it's going to start recording whatever I do and whatever I say. If you have a mic, you can speak through the mic. You can demonstrate that. So that's always an option to you. Just take note, when you record, there's no option to stop the recording unless you press the special key, which is um, shift and the windows key and Q. It does remind you when you do that. I think if you click there, it does there, you can see the shift and the windows key and Q is what stops the recording. And you only got one take. So if you make a mistake, you're just going to retake it. So let's just record quickly. Let's see how it works. Record. So it gives you a nice little countdown and tells you just to remind you what to do. And welcome to our video. And we're going to click on the little icon yeah you can see that we haven't loaded anything that we should have done and this is a terrible video that we shouldn't actually include in our pads and i'll close that and now i'm going to press shift windows q and my video now has stopped okay that's great so now i can close this uh, my program's running i'm going to go to my powerpoint and there you'll see your little video that you've created and you can play it so I don't know if you can hear, but I can hear the voice in the background. You can see the video has been run. Um, you can make it nice and big so it can fit into your screen or parts of your screen. You can crop the video. Um, you can click on right click on the video and go to options of the size of the video. You can either look at the top here to playback where you can trim parts of the video. Maybe you want to cut the last little few seconds out. Um, you want to fade in or fade out and loop. You can get all these options available to you for your video. So you do whatever you want for your video. Do your final editing. If you want to add some text on here. You can do that. Um, so you can do all those types of fancy things. A very simple video editor. And then once you are done and you're happy with your video, you then go to file and you go to export. And then you can export by creating a video. And you can choose the quality of the video. Obviously, the smaller the size of the video, the, the lower the quality. But you, if you're only showing a small section on your screen, you don't need a HD quality. You don't need to make it too big. So go for the standard or HD if you want. Save it. And then you would save it to a particular uh, place preferably in your same Delphi folder okay so you'll do that once you've got your video done I'm not going to do that for this one but once your video is done then what you can do is you can get the Windows Media Player option because it will be a WM uh, 
w or mp4 file so I click on that so there's my video which i can put onto my panel i can make it a bit smaller and you can view your video in there if you so choose so you can do that um, if you don't know how to use the windows media player there is another video with pat tips and hints about how to add video just go watch that and i'll show you how to use this component but then you just make use this component and then when you set the settings you name the file you go find the video that you just did yourself so that's how you can record your own screen by using powerpoint and so there are your three options so you can make a video use or make a help option that explains how to use the program using a help file using a text file we showed how to use the web browser component you should show it as using a particular um, web page that is going to be displayed or you can use a video and i showed you how to make your own video of whatever your program is doing so you would do a little demonstration like i'm doing right now so hopefully that's helped so hopefully you can make some nice documentation for your users and get those extra marks for some fancy features for more pat tips and hints go to our youtube channel we've got some videos there that can show you how to do them as well as other it related content um, remember to subscribe and follow us we'd love to hear from you leave a comment like the video and remember don't do it the long way do it the mr long way